I will tell you the three ways you can solve a Sudoku puzzle and explain when you should apply each method. I'll also have a special announcement at the end of this video that you won't want to miss. Let's get started. Greetings friend, Kimberlake here. I saw a video recently on the DX Sudoku uh, channel. It was DX Sudoku training video number 82, Solving Puzzles Without Pencil Marks. And I've featured some of uh, DX Sudoku, uh, Dave Peru, uh, puzzles on this channel before. He wrote a great book, uh, Taming the Sudoku Dragon, which has a lot of great puzzles in there. He uses the Sudoku Toolbox. Awesome. Highly recommend you check it out. And I'll put a link to his channel in, this vi in that video uh, in the description below. But in it, in the beginning of it, he talks about, hey, there's three ways you can solve a puzzle. You can use, he calls it Snyder Notation, uh, the modern software approach, and a no pencil mark strategy or approach. And I saw that, uh, and then he went on to talk about how to solve puzzles uh, without pencil marks. I saw that, and I was like, that's a really interesting topic, and I wanted to cover it in my video and kind of expand on it a little bit further. So I would kind of change those three topics of ways of solving into this. One, uh, solving with no marks. Two, solving with marks, where you're marking the puzzle. And the third one would be the, I'd still call it the modern software approach. And I'll dig into all three of those with some examples of how I solve those puzzles and how they can be solved that way. Okay, method one, no pencil marks. So how do you do this? Well, it's easy. You solve the puzzle without making any marks. And the, what you're seeing right now is New Singles in Your Area by Treganis. It's a puzzle I solved, and I'll put a link to that video below, where I didn't use any marks at all to solve the puzzle. I just put the digits in. Uh, ha, who are some other people who do this? Well, on YouTube, there's a channel I watch, uh, Harold Nolte. He routinely will do diabolical puzzles, so pretty hard puzzles, more than just beginner or medium level, it would be hard puzzles. And he shows how to solve these puzzles, even with naked triples, X-wings, unique rectangles, pretty impressive stuff, all without using any marks. Uh, and the way you do that is you have to use your working memory. And I mentioned that in my, my previous video about how to solve single cells. Use a lot of your working memory to kind of keep track of things as you're moving through the puzzle with your eyes and your brain. So the strengths of this approach is that it's the fastest solving method for the easiest puzzles because you're not making any extra marks. You're just going through really quick, uh, cross-hatching uh, lends itself to puzzles with no marks, very easy. It's also very clean, so if you're doing paper and pencil, you're not like writing something down and then having to erase it, write something down and having to erase it. So you can finish a puzzle and it looks pretty clean because all you have down there are the uh, digits filled in. And the last strength is it improves your working memory. Now I've been following Harold's channel and, some, and I've been doing some speed solving my own, and I can tell you, the more you practice the method, the better you get with remembering where pairs are, where triples are, uh, where a can it can be, and so you can go back and solve those a little quicker. So those are the strengths of solving without pencil marks. Now here are the limitations. It takes practice. You have to practice at it, and you have to kind of think through and, and use some way to remember where some of those hidden digits are that you're not writing down. You may also have to remember things more than once. So if you're not good at it, you're actually going through and you might be kind of doubling your work, where if you wrote down a naked pair, you know, a five and a seven, then you would know it's right there and not think about it. But if you don't, then every time you go through that part of the grid, you may have to go, oh yeah, what's the two? Oh yeah, it's a five and a seven. And the third biggest limitation is it's not practical for the hardest puzzles, either in the time to solve or the ability to solve logically. And what I mean by that is even the world champion solvers do some kind of notation. If they went with just no notation at all, they actually are a little bit slower. They found ways to be more efficient using some notation. And then if you get to really hard strategies like alternate inference chains, uh, X, Y, Z wings, uh, W, X, Y, Z wings, if you try to keep up with it without marking it down, you really are not gonna have a good time doing that. It's not gonna be easy. Uh, and if you can train your mind to look for those advanced strategies without writing the, the digits down, I wouldn't say it's any faster. It's more of like an impressive thing to do. It's kind of like playing blindfold chess. Uh, people who play blindfold chess, very impressive with the way their memory is, but it's not the best way to play chess. It's, it's more showing, wow, I've trained my mind to do these really hard things. Uh, so that's what I'd say is the, the third limitation there, the no pencil marks. The second method 
is where you add marks. Uh, the puzzle you're watching right now is Ashish Kumar, who did a collaboration with me, and this is him solving the puzzle Sudoku by Rift Clown called Fried Fish, and he uses uh, this method. And so how you do it is you start the puzzle with no additional marks, you add candidates, colors, or other marks as necessary to keep track of your cell progress and kind of where you're going with thinking. This is the most common method that people use. Uh, most folks will start off with some sort of Snyder notation where you're marking two candidates uh, remaining in a block, and then they'll proceed to restrict itself and then to all cells. Uh, coloring may also apply where you can color their cells uh, to kind of show differences between them. Again, by far the most common method to solve Sudoku. Uh, the people who do this, most challenge you'll see. So Kishore and Ashish on Unshackling Sudoku will uh, use this method. Robin, the Sudoku guy, uses this method. Cracking the Cryptic, of course, you see Mark and Simon doing this all the time, and their app is set up that way. Also, the setters associated with Cracking the Cryptic Discord. Uh, I, I've seen uh, Bremster. Strosol, uh, these guys also on their channels will, will use this method. Uh, the strengths of this is that you really have the ability to solve any puzzle. Uh, you can do this on the computer or with paper and pencil. And depending on if you want to do the corner notations versus the center, uh, it's, it helps you keep track. It's the quickest way actually to solve puzzles in competition. So Snyder Notation, named after Thomas Snyder, when he started using that in competition, he started solving puzzles quicker than other folks. A very efficient method to solve. And those puzzles are set up where Snyder Notation will help you get through that solve. Uh, and another strength of this is that it is easier to find the intended solve path of the setter. Reason being is you're like thinking through the puzzle kind of the way the setter intended. And so as you're marking these down, you're probably going to find that intended solve path because you're, you know, you're going to be restricted to some spots that the, uh, the setter, the puzzle, intended. Now here are the limitations. It can be incredibly tedious to notate uh, all these, especially paper and pencil, and then to clean it up. So everything you mark down, you have to clean up. I've seen methods where people say mark all the candidates down and then clean it up. Um, it's prone to mistakes. You put something in here, then you have to also take it out. And so you might miss something just because you didn't mark it correctly. It can be very messy. If you're doing this paper and pencil or even computer, you're kind of looking through some of these candidates and it might be hard to see the differences. And it can be a very messy way to solve a puzzle. You're doing a lot of erasing, it can be good. And it's also not that practical of a way to get to the most advanced techniques. This doesn't lend itself to techniques that require you basically seeing all the candidates across the entire grid. So like alternate inference chains, forcing chains, swordfish, jellyfish, really are intended, and the best way to solve those logically is to have all the candidates already filled out. So that's the second method. Let's move on to the third method. And the third and final method to solve Sudoku is called the modern software approach. How you do it? Well, you're gonna use software and you're gonna start the puzzle with all the candidates showing, uh, just like I, what I'm doing right here. So this is my classic Sudoku by Sudoku Explorer. I will put a link to that video below so you can watch the whole thing. And what you're trying to do is candidate elimination and candidate filtering. So when you're doing the marking method, like with Ashish's puzzle, you're starting out with so many numbers, uh, so many cells filled out, and then you're gonna work your way up to fill out all 81 in the grid, right? With the modern software approach, you're actually starting with all, you know, hundreds of candidate possibilities showing, and you're trying to narrow each cell down to one possibility. So you're doing elimination the whole time. So there's only going to be one remaining, uh, one remaining candidate for each cell and solving that way. So it's kind of like two different ways to approach the solve of a puzzle. People who do this, uh, I've seen Sudoku Swami, you know, he has his whole complete course. If you ever watched those tutorials, it's based on having all the candidates showing. Uh, DX Sudoku, when he has his tutorials, uh, he shows this primarily uh, on having all the candidates showing. And most of the puzzles I do, especially the hard and difficult ones, I will use this modern software approach. So the strengths of the approach is that it's accurate for the candidate marking and elimination. Uh, it'll show you, you know, the software will show you exactly what candidates remain. 
And when you eliminate one, it'll, it'll tell you that it's gone. Uh, it gives you a complete picture of the grid so you can see all the things that are going on in the grid uh, at one time, all the candidates and what's going on with those. And you can apply the most advanced techniques very easily. So if I want to look at swordfish, jellyfish, if I'm looking at alternate inference chains, XY chains, you know, all that information is already right there and I can start working on it. Uh, otherwise, I would have to mark all that as a can. That's a very tedious thing to do. And then the last thing, it's very quick on the uh, candidate cleanup. So with, if you're adding uh, the marks, then you have to kind of go back and take them out with most, uh, most of the apps. With this one, as you remove it, uh, you're just you're cleaning it up automatically and then you can go and solve. So you, you notice here how I'm, you can solve those naked singles pretty easily because it'll just show, hey, there's only one main and a nine remaining and I can move on. So it will lead to quicker solves, but you can also have that benefit of dealing with those harder strategies. So here are the weaknesses. The weaknesses are it's kind of hard to find a starting point when you're looking with all those candidates showing, it's a lot to filter through it and get used to. So you may not be able to go, okay, where should I start with this puzzle? So you have to kind of just do some scanning uh, through a lot of candidates. Second, uh, it's more data to sift through, like I was saying. And now you're kind of changing your focus from candidates to cells filled in and kind of go back and forth. Third, you will need a computer. You'll need some kind of app, computer, phone, tablet app to do this very well. And the other and fourth, probably worst thing is it's not allowed in competition. You know, if you, so if you're going to go compete in a World Sudoku Championship, you know, you can use a marker, pencil. You're not going to be able to use a computer to solve because it gives you kind of an unfair advantage. So which method is the best for solving Sudoku puzzles? I'll leave that up to you. You may notice I use all three depending on what I anticipate the, uh, the puzzle difficulty to be because uh, I enjoy solving without pencil marks. also enjoy adding it in. Uh, to try to see what the setter intended and then you see with these more complicated ones i just show all the candidates and do eliminations that way i suggest you try them all out see which one will help you solve sudoku quicker and more accurately let me know what your thought in the comments below i'd also love to hear from some of those other sudoku youtubers as well with the channel name and preferred solving method now for my big announcement i'm going to give you the viewer a month of sudoku that's right. I'll release a new video on my channel every day in the month of February. I'm scheduling the video categories by the day of the week. So depending on what day of the week it is, you will know whether that video will be a live solve, analysis video, a tutorial, or a collaboration. This should give you a great reason to like, share, and subscribe to Smart Hobbies now so you don't miss any of this new content. In the meantime, please check out these other videos from my channel. Thank you all so much for watching.